Spinal cord injury has brought much change to your life. You are now learning to cope with and adapt to many of these physiological and emotional changes. The most powerful tools for returning control and quality to your life are education and knowledge. Proper skin care, the prevention of injury, and the avoidance of skin infection are very important steps in this learning process. The skin is the largest and one of the most important organs of the body. It functions as a temperature regulator, as barrier against bacteria, and acts as a padding device. The skin contains nerves which serve as sensors, receiving information from the central and autonomic nervous systems and distributing these messages to the brain. This system of communication helps us to avoid unpleasant or painful sensations and enables us to react to possible dangers. With normal body sensation, these processes seem simple and automatic. A spinal cord injury, however, creates a break in this network, and the message pathways become obstructed. With spinal cord injury, individuals lose sensation and the ability to move voluntarily below the level of injury. Additionally, changes within the autonomic system can contribute to poor circulation. With all of these changes, the body loses its most critical protection device, making the skin very vulnerable to injury and infection, which can result in skin breakdown. Skin sores, also known as pressure sores, bed sores, or decubitus ulcers are the result of this skin breakdown process. But while skin breakdown can be the most difficult and dangerous complication of spinal cord injury, it is also the most preventable. A skin sore will first appear as a reddened area on the skin. If pressure is not relieved, the skin, as well as the tissue underneath, continues to break down. Skin sores are often compared to icebergs because the visible part of the sore may be only the tip of the iceberg, with most of the damaged tissue lying beneath the sore. The muscles and the bones can deteriorate, resulting in tragic circumstances. Even damage this severe may appear as only a red area, a blister, or a pimple on the surface of the skin. Pressure ulcers can result in dehydration, anemia, amputation, kidney failure, and even death. But these serious health risks can be avoided with preventive measures and proper skin care. Pressure ulcers are 100% preventable. Many different sources can contribute to or cause skin breakdown. Excessive pressure or shearing, burns, exposure to cold, bruises and scrapes, prolonged skin wetness, sitting or lying on hard objects, poor posture, contractures. Excessive or prolonged pressure due to lack of movement of body weight is a common cause of skin sores. The skin becomes compressed, usually between a bony area of the body and another hard surface, such as a wheelchair, the base of a cushion, a bed mattress, or catheter connectors. Prior to injury, you would automatically move in response to this sort of pressure sensation, even during sleep. With a spinal cord injury, however, you must now develop a system of awareness utilizing preventive techniques, such as weight shifting, to compensate for what your skin can no longer feel. Shearing force is a factor that contributes to the mechanical destruction of tissue, mainly the deep tissues. This occurs when the tissues that are attached to the bone are pulled in one direction while the surface tissues are stuck to an external surface. This might happen during a transfer, while weight shifting in a power recline chair, or at any time when the skin is dragged across a surface. Burns can be another source of skin injury. Always check the temperature of bath and wash water and use caution when you are near stoves, heat vents, and fireplaces. The sun can also be a source of burns. Always use a sunscreen to prevent sunburn and beware of hot sand, concrete, hot cars and upholstery, and your wheelchair if it has been left in the sun. 
Wearing dark colored clothing, particularly of synthetic blends when sitting in the sun, can sometimes cause burns to the skin underneath. Other hazards are electric blankets, heating pads and hot packs, hair dryers, sun lamps, cigarettes, and hot foods and liquids carried on your lap. Another environmental hazard is frostbite. During cold weather, always dress warmly and avoid extended exposure to the cold. If it is necessary to apply ice packs to your skin, do so with caution. Bruises and scrapes are also harmful to the skin. Use special care when transferring in and out of your wheelchair so that your body does not drag across the tire. Caregivers must always lift rather than drag when transferring. Whenever possible, caregivers should also avoid wearing jewelry that may have sharp edges or scrape against the skin. Good personal hygiene is essential to the prevention of skin breakdown. Bathing promotes normal skin functioning by removing contaminants and dead skin. It is important to always dry the skin thoroughly. Perspiration, urine, stool, or any other source of prolonged wetness can irritate the skin, causing loss of skin layers. Whenever possible, avoid sitting or lying on hard surfaces such as floors, bathtubs, cracked upholstery, deflated cushions, or the ground outdoors. On those occasions when it may be necessary to sit on a hard surface, be sure to use a cushion to protect your skin. Keep items such as combs, keys, and coins out of clothing pockets where they may become pinched against the skin. Poor posture can also be a contributor to pressure sores. Inadequate equipment and wheelchairs are a primary source of this problem. Slingbacks and seats that do not provide enough support for the body, combined with the repeated movements of performing daily activities such as writing or reaching, can result in postural and skin problems. Contracture develops as a result of remaining in the same position for too long. People in wheelchairs tend to stay in a 90 degree position most of the time as shown in this diagram. The back, hips, and pelvis remain at a 90 degree angle and the knees stay bent at a 90 degree angle. Contracture can be prevented by participating in a standing program, stretching, and by sleeping in the prone position. These are some of the more common causes of skin injury and infection, but the sources can be limitless. You must learn to become aware of any situation that may present a threat to your skin, and your best defense against this kind of danger is prevention. Some of the most important methods of skin protection are to perform routine skin inspections, do weight shifts regularly, use padding in bed, turn or have someone turn you routinely in bed, practice good nutrition and hygiene techniques, use a seat cushion at all times, monitor the condition of your cushions, keep your wheelchair adjusted properly, avoid prolonged skin wetness, wear clothing that is soft and loose fitting, and avoid sitting or lying on hard surfaces. Skin inspections should be performed each morning before getting up and each night when returning to bed. Check your body from head to toe looking for signs of redness or discoloration, excessive dryness, moisture, hardness, inflammation, blistering, general cleanliness, rashes, scrapes, bruises or cuts, loss of elasticity, or areas of skin that are warm to touch. Use mirrors to check places on your body that you cannot see. If you are unable to hold a mirror yourself, have your caregiver position and move the mirror for you so that you are able to see your skin. Caregivers should also be directed as to what signs to be watchful for. Meticulous skin inspections are crucial in the prevention of skin sores. Too much pressure on the skin will first appear as a reddened area. No damage has occurred if the redness fades within 15 minutes. If the reddened area does not disappear after 30 minutes, 
it is imperative that the area remain free of pressure until normal skin appearance returns. You will also need to determine the cause of this pressure and eliminate it. The most vulnerable areas of the body are those of the weight-bearing bony prominences. When in a sitting position, your body weight is supported by two bony prominences called ischials. When all your weight is on these ischials, circulation is cut off. To relieve these areas when sitting, either lift yourself up by doing a push-up weight shift or lean over one side of the chair or the other. With higher level injuries, weight shifts can be achieved by reclining back in your power chair or by having an assistant do a tilt back weight shift if you are in a manual chair. Your feet are also at greater risk for skin sores. It is generally recommended to wear shoes that are one size larger than the size you wore prior to injury. Check inside the shoes for any rough seams. Additionally, make sure that the footrest on your wheelchair is adjusted correctly. If the footrest is too high, excessive pressure on the ischials will occur. If the footrest is too low, you will slouch, which will put pressure on the tailbone. When lying down, the susceptible body points vary depending on the position you are in. The red areas shown here indicate the most common bony prominences when you are lying on your front or on your back. When lying in bed, take care to distribute the body weight and maintain correct body alignment. You should turn yourself or have your caregiver do so on a regular schedule to relieve pressure, usually every two to five hours depending on what position you are in. Foam pads should be used above and below all bony prominences to protect these areas and provide cushioning. It is possible, with proper padding, to sleep or remain in the prone position all night or up to eight hours. Another method of prevention is the use of a seat cushion at all times, in your wheelchair, in the car, even when sitting on a sofa. Use shower and commode chairs that have padded seats. And make sure to periodically check the condition of your cushion. Good nutrition is also essential to the prevention of skin breakdown. People who are too thin do not maintain enough natural padding, and excess weight exerts too much force on the skin. The types of foods you eat are very important. Dietary proteins are vital for the building and repairing of skin cells. Good sources for these proteins include meat, eggs, cheese, milk, and yogurt. Check to make sure that your clothing fits properly. Tight-fitting jeans and clothing with zippers, buckles, rivets, or wrinkles can threaten skin integrity. Soft, loose-fitting cotton fabrics are the best choice. Avoid lycra and nylon materials, as they can hold perspiration against the skin. Also make sure that your wheelchair fits you properly and is correctly adjusted at all times. When in your wheelchair, maintain correct posture so that your weight is evenly distributed. You can check this by looking into a full-length mirror. And finally, react immediately to the first sign of skin breakdown. If your skin has become reddened or bruised, stay off the area until normal appearance returns. If a sore has begun and the skin is broken, gently cleanse the area with soap and water. Cover the sore with a gauze that has been dampened with saline. Change the dressing according to your doctor's or nurse's instructions. If the sore is draining, clean and cover it with a saline dampened gauze dressing three times a day. If you should burn yourself, apply cold water for 20 minutes. If a blister forms, do not open it. Clean the area around the blister with soap and water twice a day. Cover the blister with a sterile gauze dressing. If the blister should break, treat it as an open sore. Skin that becomes chapped by wetness or friction should be washed with soap and water and then allowed to dry thoroughly. Keep the area open for 20 minutes, two to three times a day. If any of these skin problems do not clear up, call your doctor. There may be times when you may be at a higher risk for skin breakdown. 
It is important to check your skin more often when you are sick or have a fever, if you become depressed, when drinking alcohol, or if your weight is fluctuating. Substance abuse, smoking, and abuse of prescription medications can also contribute to skin breakdown. The consequences of pressure sores can be life-threatening. They heal slowly and often require costly medical and surgical intervention. In some cases, weeks or months of bed rest are required for healing. This can have a serious impact on your job, school, social activities, and family life. Most devastating of all is the ongoing trauma to your body. An opening in the skin creates a pathway for infection while depleting the body of vital fluids and protein. The prolonged inactivity that can result from skin breakdown can also create a weakened physical condition. Any area of skin breakdown becomes more vulnerable to future breakdown. Deep ulcers can ultimately lead to loss of limb or loss of life. The costs are immeasurable. Prevention, on the other hand, costs nothing. Your awareness and preventive techniques will become a routine part of your life. The healthy habits you begin now will help you to maintain a quality of being that can last throughout your lifetime. And remember, you are responsible for your own care and no one can take better care of you than you can. Craig Hospital, caring exclusively for patients with spinal cord and traumatic brain injury. Before your spinal cord injury, you may not have given much thought to your skin. You may have noticed your skin after sunburn, scratch, or some other problem. But our skin is always there. We wash it, dry it, lotion it, and cover it on a daily basis. The skin is the largest and yet perhaps the least appreciated organ of our body. After spinal cord injury, you've begun to realize the important role that skin plays in keeping you warm, protected, and healthy. Special care must now be taken to keep the skin strong and prevent any sores from developing. One of the most important things you can do is to pad yourself properly when going to bed. This video will show how pressure affects the skin and what you can do to prevent the problems. To begin, let's take a look at how the skin is structured. 
The skin is a series of layers that each performs a special job. The outside layer of skin, the epidermis, acts as a buffer from the outside environment. This outside layer sheds dead skin cells as new ones are made from the dermis or next layer of skin. The dermis consists of thick, fibrous tissues that give strength and elasticity to the skin. The dermis is richly supplied with blood vessels, sweat and oil glands, and nerve endings. Now, how much protection these skin layers offer really depends on your own body weight. If you're underweight, these layers may be thinner than usual and not protecting your body as well. If you're overweight, the extra weight may put more pressure on the skin layers. Healthy skin is smooth, with no breaks in the surface. It is warm, not hot or red, and neither dry and flaky, nor moist and wrinkled. Healthy skin is a mirror of a healthy body. Muscles and other tissues provide a natural cushion over bony prominences of the body. After spinal cord injury, there's a less natural padding due to a decrease in muscle mass because of the paralysis. This provides less protection to areas of the body. So extra protection must be provided to the bony areas by a system of padding. Before spinal cord injury, a person would normally shift their weight or turn if uncomfortable. When pressure, pain, or discomfort are present, the person with a spinal cord injury may not feel it due to a decrease in normal sensation. When messages from the sensory nerves do not reach the brain, important alarm signals will not get through. Thus, a person with a spinal cord injury can get a skin sore without even knowing it. With a spinal cord injury, you may not be able to move as freely, so proper padding in bed is very important to protect these bony areas. Let's take a look at the places on the body where the bones are closer to the surface. Laying on your back, these would include the back of your head, shoulder blades, elbows, tailbone, and your heels. Lying on your side includes the ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. Lying on your stomach, these would include your shoulders, hips, knees, and your toes. Let's take a look at what happens to the areas of the body when pressure is applied. Pay particular attention to your elbow, your hip bone, the tailbone, the side of knees, and your heels. As you can see, when pressure is applied even by the body part just resting on the hard surface, the blood flow is directed away from the area. When blood flow is slowed down or stopped to any area of the body, the skin lacks food and oxygen supply and becomes more fragile, thus leading to breakdown. Let's take a look at the same problem with the elbow. Now we'll take a look at the problem with the hip. As you can see, the same problem can occur with the tailbone. The problem can also occur with your knees. And last but not least, the heels on your body are also bony prominences that need to be watched carefully. Ways to provide protection to these areas of your body must come from the outside. For example, bed surfaces, pads, and mattress overlays. Here are a few examples. A mattress with Geomat. A Maxifloat mattress a pillow top mattress. You and your treatment team will decide the type of bed surface you will use at home. This decision will depend on your level of SCI, what kind of transfers you use, and your attendant care needs as well as your current skin condition and overall health. This is the padding you will use between your knees, around your ankles, and under your legs. Pillows, quad pads, ankle pads, when you're discharged from Craig Hospital, your nurse will help you order these as part of your take-home supplies. Over time, you may notice these pads are losing their firmness and density. If you notice a pad is getting old and not performing well, replace it. Also replace pads if they become soiled with urine or stool. It is not a good idea to use rolled up sheets, towels, or blankets as padding. These items can actually be too hard and could possibly cause a sore, so only use the recommended items for padding. When placing the pillows and pads to protect the bony prominences, keep in mind this simple rule, pad above and below the bony prominence. By following this rule of thumb, you can be assured that pressure will be relieved and the skin protected. This may be a process that takes some time to figure out. If you're traveling and sleeping on a different bed surface than your own, you may have to increase the padding and take extra steps to check your skin. Let's take a look at the locations of padding. These may vary depending on your needs. When lying on your back, place the pads to protect the back of your head, shoulder blades, tailbone, and heels. A pillow under the head. 
a pad above and below the tailbone, a pad just above the knee bend, a pad just above the back of the heel, a pad at the bottom of the feet to keep a 90 degree angle at the ankle, a pad or pillow between the knees and ankles. When lying on your side, place the pad so your head, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles are protected. A pillow under the head. A pillow placed behind the back for stability. A pad above and below the hip bone. A pad above the side of the knee. A pad above the ankle bone. A pad or pillow between the knees and ankles. If you're experiencing shoulder pain, you might want to add a pillow under your chest or abdomen area to relieve the pressure of the shoulders. Padding and pillow placement can sometimes relieve shoulder pain. Follow the placement of pads and monitor pain levels. Adjusting the pads may take some trial and error to find the right spot. When you don't really want to sleep on your side or totally on your stomach, you can sleep in a three-quarter prone position. Here's where the pillows and pads can be placed for best protection and comfort. When lying in a three-quarter prone position, place the pads to protect the hips, knees, and ankles. A pillow for the head. A pillow for the arm to rest on and a shoulder pulled forward. Upper leg pulled forward with pillow under leg. Pillow behind back for support. Pads under ankle bones. When lying completely on your stomach, place pads to protect the chest, hips, knees, and toes. A pad may need to be placed between the knees to protect the skin. If you're padded properly and are comfortable on your stomach, you could possibly sleep all night without being turned. Before sleeping on your stomach, check with your doctor to be sure it's okay. Pillow for comfort under the head. Optional use may be a thin pillow or pad placed under the chest to relieve pressure on the collarbone. Pads above and below the hip bones can be useful to relieve pressure on a suprapubic catheter, iliac crest, or penis and scrotum area. Pad placed above the knee to maintain natural curvature. Place a pad or pillow under lower legs. Pillow or pad between the knees and ankles. When sitting up in bed at a 45 degree angle, it's important to protect the tailbone, knees, and heels. Place a pad above and below the tailbone area. A pad is placed just under the thigh above the back of the knee. A pad just above the heel. And a pad at the bottom of the feet to keep a 90 degree angle at the ankle. Throughout the night, you may need to adjust where the pads are placed. If you have bad spasms during the night and are unable to move, you will need someone to help check and adjust the pads to be sure they are protecting the bony prominences. Remember. Care of your skin after spinal cord injury is a big responsibility, and it's an important one too. Padding in bed is one way you can prevent skin breakdown and keep your skin in great shape. It's important that caregivers and attendants understand how to pad you properly and comfortably. For more information about taking care of your skin after spinal cord injury, watch the Skin Care After SCI video. Someone to hold, someone to hold would be so peachy.